you doing? Hey, 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 everybody. Give me just about two minutes to finish setting up the tennis quiz. I thought I had it set up. So hold on just one moment. Okay, your attendance quiz is ready. Your attendance quiz is ready. Good morning, Felix. How are you? I hope you and everybody is doing well this morning. Let's see what we got going on today.
Okay, everyone, if you will go ahead and begin working in typing.com wherever you left off, we'll come back together at about 9.20. So go ahead, wherever you left off in typing.com, we will uh, come back together at 9.20 um, to uh, begin reviewing again. So go and work in typing.com until uh, 920, please.
Okay, everybody, let me get to what I need to get to. Okay, everybody, if you have not, go to modules under modules uh, under exam review. Please pull up exam review um, number three. Please pull up exam review number three. I'll give us about a minute to get that pulled up. Okay, can um, Felix, can I get you to read uh, number one, in the please? Paper and make it a, in the document. Okay, okay. Abby, can I get you to read number one, Abby? Yes, a sporting goods store reviews its sales, records to determine if it should continue carrying snowboards. How is the store using the marketing information? Okay, and right, some of this we may not know yet, but it is going to be C, to make product management decisions. And thank you so much, Abby. Thank you. To make product uh, management decisions. So what they're doing is they're looking back at their sales, um, determining, you know, uh, if they should continue carrying snowboards, what snowboards were the most popular. So they're using a product management. They're making a management decision because the management, um, they're usually the ones that make decisions on what products to keep in the store. So one is C, to make product management Sebastian, can I get you to read number two? Sebastian, can I get you to read number two? Sebastian, are you there? Um, yeah, you, <laughs> well, you better wake up. Please read number two. <laughs> When a sports manager considers factors such as lifestyles and interest levels in a specific sport, he or she is segmenting a market on the basis of which segment. And this one, like I said, some of this we have not had a chance to cover as of yet. Um, this will be psychographics. Psychographics. This will be psychographics. Be psychographics. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. Three. Um, three. Males between the ages of 18 to 35 who are sports minded and live in Orlando, Florida, is an example of which group? Me. Good try. It's gonna be a niche market. Niche market. That's something that we're gonna have to cover. Um, so it would be a niche market. And uh, who, who was that? Chanel. All right. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you, Chanel, and thank you, Felix. Thank you. 
Chanel, do me a favor. Will you read number four? Which is a factor that sport and event marketers consider when targeting customers for a specific event? B. B, thank you so much. It'd be demographics. They're gonna look at the location um, and other um, things, but demographics. So four is gonna be demographics. Demographic tells us a whole lot about who we need to market, uh, who we need, to, who's gonna be our target market. So four is demographics. Felix, will you read number five? An important part of target marketing in the sport entertainment industry involves appealing to potential customers who have which source? Will be B? It's going to be D, disposable income. So um, this one says an important part of targeted marketing in the sports and, and uh, industry involves the uh, potential customers who have which resources is going to be disposable income, income that they can just spend just out of nowhere, just spend it on anything just because. So disposable income, the income is there. They have the money right there. So that's what disposable income, we just have money laying around. Disposable income is five. But thank you so much, Felix. And guys, hopefully we would get to cover a lot of this. Like I said, because of the situation, we still have not had uh, been able to cover a lot. But I wanted to make sure that you have everything that is in school net. And we will go back next week and I'll send you some things as in, via email, um, letting you know that you're going to, uh, some things you're going to work on on your own. And then we'll come back together as a class to discuss. So be looking at your email. I'm going to send you some assignments. I also put it in remind. K6. What should a sport or an event do in order to be successful? What should they do in order to be successful? <laughs> that was, yes. Who, who, who said that? Nazani. Hey, Nazani. How are you? Uh, Nazani, tell me, you sent me an email yesterday. Um, let me know how long that's going on. Um, you sent me an email. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let me know how long I have. Um, okay. Because um, I do want to contribute. All right. So seven. Nazani, will you read number seven? The promoters of an extreme sports weekend will most likely target which demographic? Graphic group. D? D, yes, D. Uh, young men between the ages of 12 to 34, extreme sports events. So that means they're going to be doing some major things. So, you know, uh, business executives, that's not for them. Older men between ages 40 and 50, although they probably like things like that, that's not going to be really geared at them and professional athletes. So extreme sports weekend would be included young men ages 12 to 34. Now you could also include the professional athletes because some of them may attend things like that, but more than likely it will appeal more to the ages of 12 to 34 because professional athletes probably won't be around anyway. They're doing their own thing. Eight, which is a vital promotional technique for entertainment marketing, which is a vital promotional technique for entertainment marketing. It, who, who wants to give the answer? Hey. Good job, but it's going to be trailers, trailers. They are saying trailers uh, is the, or entertainment marketing, trailers. So eight is trailers. How you doing today, Jonathan? 
I'm tired. I knew it. I knew it. I knew you was going to say that. I knew it. <laughs> I understand. I understand. But, hey, look, we Thursday is the last day for y'all. It's the last day. Last day. So don't y'all don't y'all love Thursdays? <laughs> Jonathan, will you read number nine for me? Will you read number nine? Repeated exposure to the largest, most diverse population of people is the benefit of which advertiser? A. And you are right. Nine is a out of home. Nine is a out of home. All right, 10, 10. Karen, will you read number 10? Karen, can I get you to read 10? Andrew, will you read 10? Okay. What form of advertising involves a company paying an athlete to appear in a television commercial or newspaper ad? What form a of advertising? A it is A. Thank y'all. Who, who, who were my triple team, double team? Who was that? Nazani, Abby. All right, Nazani, Abby. All right, Phoenix, was that you too? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. That is endorsements. Thank y'all so much. So eleven. When performer, when a performer expands into international markets, an important consideration for his or her promotional efforts should be to determine often whether which action is necessary. D. So it's going to be D to adapt promotional message for each market. Because when you're dealing with international markets, you do have to, um, you'll have to change up some of your um, promotions, um, the way you um, target certain areas. Um, that, so what you do internationally is not something that you would do uh, here in the States. Um, you're going to do something a little bit different. So you would adapt the promotional message for each market. You have to change up your uh, marketing strategy just a little bit. So 11 is adapt promotional messages for each market. Twelve, a business wants to create or emphasize positive associations between a specific sport and itself. What type of advertising media should the business consider using? Hey. hey, hey, all right. Who are my people? Who are my people? Say, hey, Nazani. Okay, if somebody else, who else was it? Felix. All right, thank y'all so much. Stadium signage, stadium signage. Get your name out there, you're associated with the um wherever you're promoting it, I think. Um, hopefully, we have some at our uh, football um, stadium. I uh, would like to see more businesses putting their signage out, uh, being um, a lot more sponsors coming in. Since we are the only um, high school around for, you know, so I think um, hopefully we'll get some more um, people to come in and want to contribute. 13. After a volleyball player wins a gold medal in the Summer Olympics, a sunscreen manufacturer pays the athlete to appear in its television commercials and magazine advertisements. This is an example of which activity? A. 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 All right. Who are my people? Who are my lovely voices? Abby. Nazani. Abby, Abby and Nazani. Thank y'all. Y'all so sweet. 
All right, it's gonna be A endorsement. Uh, 14. Uh, let's see. Danny, will you read 14? Danny, will you read 14? I do believe some of my people are still asleep. Okay, um, Abby, would you mind reading 14? Yes. Um, what are the basic elements of print advertisements? And I think that's B. And I think you are correct. It would be B. Um, those are um, a basic print advertisements, headline, illustration, copy, and business identification. So something we have not covered as of yet. I thought that was the earlier part, but I don't think we got to cover that. But like I said, I would do my best to get everything covered. But like, we're just so crunched for time. So, but you will be covered as far as for your review. So hopefully um, the these questions will be on the test or something similar. Like I said, I do not make it out. Wish I could, but you guys are going to do just fine. And I'll show you. Um, show you some um, examples. OK, 15, which part of print advertising is usually noticed first? By the reader. What does the reader normally be? It would be B. And who, who is this young lady? Nazani. All right. The illustration. Most of the time we look at illustration. I know I do. Um, oftentimes the picture will um, catch my attention. So if a picture catches my attention, that's what I go to first. So the illustration. 15 is illustration. 16, computers are complex products and have features that need to be explained. What element will be crucial to include in an advertising for a new computer? A. C. C, copy. Go ahead. Who are my people? Who are my people? Felix and who? Abby. Abby, go Abby. Go Felix. Thank y'all. So 16 is copy. 16 is copy. Like I said, a lot of this is dealing with advertising. Um, the ins and out. So hopefully we'll get to cover some some more of it. Um, Seventeen advertising copy that states only three days left is trying to obtain which outcome? A. A. It is A. Encourage action. Is that Abby? Yes. And Felix. Is that Abby and Felix? Yes. All righty. Thank y'all. So encourage action. Only three days left. They want those customers to come out and buy those products. Like it was, you know, remember Cyber Monday? And then they extended Cyber Monday. I'm still getting emails that um, Cyber Monday has been extended. Okay. <laughs> I did see a good deal on the, what is it? Um, Air, what is it? AirPods, the, the pros or whatever. Yeah, last night, I think they were down to 219. I think that's the cheapest I've seen them. If they go down to 199 now, right? But I, I'll, I'll probably have to break down and get me a pair. 18. When Armor, when Arm, Arm and Hammer advertises that it's baking soda gets rid of odors in refrigerators, its ad copy is pointing out which feature of the product. A. A. Is that Abby and Felix? Yes. All right. So Arm and Hammer, that's right. And it does what exactly what it says. Arm and Hammer keeps your refrigerator this it's odor free. Because you know you put foods in there, all those odors together, but it does exactly what it says. So 18 is uses. Let's move to 19. Currently, which mobile advertising strategies have been most successful? Um, 19 is going B. to be B. Text message with a coupon. Who doesn't love that? I don't think I've been getting a lot of text messages, though, with coupons. They'll say a certain percentage, y'all, but I don't, every so often, but not, not too much. Text message with a coupon. I think we should have a text message with a coupon every day. 
So 19. I might give y'all a uh, uh, text y'all a coupon. <laughs> something for school. That'd be something different. All right, let's move to 20. Which promotion option enables marketers to target specific groups of customers so they can focus their promotional efforts to get the best results? B. 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 All right, good try, B. Who, uh, who, who said B? Abby. All right, Abby, you own it today. <laughs> I love to hear your lovely voice. I love to hear everybody. So 20 is B, direct marketing. 20 is B, direct marketing. Let's move to 21. We're going to try to get to 35, I think, and then we're going to shut it down. Uh, which statement regarding campaigns of direct mail marketing is true? D. D. All right, 20 is D. They should include a call to action. So they should include a call to action telling the consumer what to do and how how much time they have left to do it. So they should include a call to action. So direct mail marketing is like kind of like when you get um they send you coupons in the mail, um, things of that nature. 22. To attract fans to their websites, professional sports organizations, media outlets, and entrepreneurs offer online simulations that allow fans to build their own sports teams and compete against other fans. What is this growing industry? D. 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 Y'all know that. Fantasy sports. Something I have never tried. Not yet. Fan I don't know a whole lot about it. Fantasy sports. Fantasy sports. Who are my um who are my young ladies that was it Abby Nazani? Yes. And me. Okay, and my young man. Thank you, Felix. Felix said, hey, you don't leave me out. <laughs> All right. 23. A business places a matrix on a promotional sign that potential customers can scan with their smartphones. After scanning the matrix, potential customers have digital coupons in their smartphones, which they use to obtain discount discounted products at the point of purchase. This form of mobile advertising involves the use of which feature? D. D. You are correct. Quick response code or QR codes. Do y'all know I had just just recently started using QR codes? So y'all way y'all way uh, ahead of me. I'm like, I don't know how to use this. What do you do? So uh, quick response codes are what we call QR codes. We abbreviate and say QR. QR stands for quick response. 24. What is an example of online advertising? Excuse me. Which is an example of online advertising? D. C. Sponsoring a website. So uh, 24, uh, online advertising is sponsoring a website. Although 24, I'm not sponsoring a website. I know what they mean, but I don't know. I think they could use another example. 25, which is a characteristic of most online banner advertisements? D. D. It is the interactive, interactive banner. You want to be interactive. So 25 is interactive. Can I get someone to read 26, please? Which is most likely to be able to search in spiders? C. Thank you. Yes. HTML text. Yes. Thank you so much, Jonathan. So 26 is C HTML text. 27. Sports or event industries often use electronic media to obtain which goal? D. D, motivate customers to buy. 
And who is the young lady speaking? Abby. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sweetheart. All right, so 27, Abby says, to motivate customers to buy. Yes. I don't think any of us have any problems with buying. I don't think, I don't think, well, I know for me, you don't really have to motivate me to buy. I don't know what it is. I like to see those delivery trucks uh, pull up. So 28. To generate excitement about its newly remodeled facilities, the plans of Wilmer Hotel is to send advertising messages to past guests via their cell phones. Each message will contain a brief video showcasing new features and services that the hotel offers. Which type of mobile, excuse me, mobile messaging service should Wilmer use? C. 28 is going to be C, multimedia messages service. So they're going to use um different um media services so multimedia but good try for everybody good try because like some of this we like, it's kind of like i don't know but 2080c multimedia messages services or mms Twenty nine, which is an effective design technique that adds a personal touch to direct mail. C. C. Use a font that looks like handwriting in the address section of an envelope. It looks like somebody um, wrote it. It was personally done. A lot of times you can reach customers when you actually handwrite things. So a lot of some people have gotten away from handwriting things. They want everything generated by the computer. But when you handwrite stuff, it adds a uh, a personal touch to it, and it makes consumers want to come back because they felt that you took the time to write it. So 29 is C. Use a font that looks like, hand, like handwriting in the address section of an envelope. 30. Which type of sport or event businesses would most likely place a banner advertisement on a ski resort's website? B. 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 Snowboard retailer. Yes. It just fits in. Snowboard retailer. Thirty-one. How does a professional sports team earn revenue? when it permits games to appear on television. C. 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 Selling broad yeah, selling broadcast rights. Thirty two. A tire producer is most likely to advertise its products on a website that interacts um which group the, the interest which group? C. C. It is going to be C. You are right. Auto racing enthusiast. Enthusiast. They want those best tires, um, and not necessarily um, where well, auto racing could be professional or amateur. You see all the what I call souped up cars. They put a lot of money in those souped up cars. Thirty three. Which is a disadvantage of using direct mail letters as a form of promotion? C. C. Many people think of the letter as junk mail to be discarded without opening. So a lot of times people don't open it up. Um, oftentimes I will leave uh, a letter. It'll be a couple of days uh, before I open it up. But now direct mail, when uh, I was growing up, we used to have uh, probably about once a month, there would be coupons that would come in like a four by six envelope. And there would be all types of coupons. Some of them you used, some of you didn't. But there would probably be about this much coupons that would come every month. I think they do it maybe once. I've seen it like once a year now. I see it coming. 34. Which is one of the advantages of direct uh, mail advertising for advertising? Let me read it again. Hey, hey, hey y'all got it. So, Ms. Argray messes up. We still got it. Aiming the message to Pacific customers. I do see that they are um, certain. Um, they know, I guess, because they look at the demographics, they know where you live, um, your buying um, strategies. So, they do promote certain products that you're more ought to buy. 
like I get a lot of um spa day spa um, coupons. Thirty five. One advantage of di writing direct mail letters that include coupons or reply cards is that the result of the advertising effort may be considered to have which effect? B. C. It is going to be C, measurable. You'll be able to determine what works, what does not work um, by how many people, if they send the reply cards back, if they use the coupons, because you'll know if they use the coupons because there's a code. So they'll be able to determine how many, because um, they know how many they've sent out and um, and to whom, you know, the areas. And so by them using those coupons, they'll be able to determine, you know, were they effective or not. Is there anybody that needs me to go back over one through 35? Okay, so what we will do on Monday, we will finish 36 through um, 75, I think, on Monday. And then we will probably wrap it up on Wednesday. We will wrap our um, review up on Wednesday. So that will give you um, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven days to prepare for the exam our exam great. yes when are all the study guys do um all the study guys are going i'm going to lock them on december 15th so i'm going to leave them open until december 15th, 15th at 11 59 so that gives you enough time to get in all the study guys hopefully we're going to have but probably about three more that'll give you enough time to get all the study guys in and then on the 15th, I'm going to lock them. You will have to come to school. I think our exam is December 16th. So you will have to come to school December 16th. Okay. And remember when you come to school, the only thing you need is yourself. I know that you'll bring your cell phones. I know that. So usually what we do with the cell phones, you know that you have to power down, power off your cell phones. And you will have to, whoever is going to test you, I won't be in the room. I would love to be in the room with y'all, but I'm not going to be there, I don't think. Um, you'll have to, they'll have a place where you put your cell phones. So I'm, everybody pretty much knows that. But if you don't know, you will have to turn your cell phone until testing is over. So don't come in acting like you knew and don't want to cooperate because those are the rules. Because I, as an adult, have to turn in my cell phone when I go into places. When I took, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, when I took my testing exam for my teacher to be a teacher, I had to lock up all my stuff. I, don't, I couldn't take in anything. Just me and myself. Couldn't even take in my purse. So um, make sure that you come. Make sure you get enough rest the day before. Um, you'll come in and take the exam. But you... For right now, we are doing in-person exams. So your exam will be December 16th. And I will send you guys, look, be on the lookout for your um, attendance quiz tomorrow, your little attendance quiz that we do on Fridays. I will also um, send you some stuff that I want y'all to work on. Make sure that you're typing.com, beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. Um, you get all those done. All your study guides, you can upload to your homework folder, okay? Do I have anybody got any questions on anything? If not, I will see y'all guys on Monday. Hope y'all have a great weekend. Oh, and I'll remind y'all about the chats. They're going to have chats, career chats tomorrow. I think it's going to be graphic design. So I'll send it out, okay? Bye-bye, guys. Bye, Miss Harper. Have a great day and a great you weekend. Too, Felix, and thank everybody. Y'all did a great job today. Oh, Jonathan, ask Jonathan about that. Ask Jonathan about it.